Alabama has produced so many superstar players and big time draft prospects, it's impossible to name them all and it's a waste of time even trying to start naming them all. But in the last few years, there has been one guy who everyone has been talking about as the next can't miss prospect out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and that is Will Anderson. He's been one of the best defensive ends in college football history, has terrorized the SEC for the last three years, and has a valid argument for going number one overall in the 2023 NFL Draft. A lot of people know who Will Anderson is, but in today's video, I want to tell his story and how he got to this point in his career. We're going to talk about how dominant he was at Alabama and why everyone wants him at the next level, in his case, for going number one overall. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you love football content. Leave a like if you want to support what I'm doing here. Let me know what player I should cover next for the 2023 NFL Draft. And turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, as sometimes you guys won't see it if you don't do that. Now, let's go ahead and get started and talk about the insane rise of Will Anderson. Before Will Anderson became one of the best players in football, he was just a kid growing up in the state of Georgia. Like most kids there, he took a liking to the Bulldogs. He said, quote, I did grow up a Georgia fan. I got recruited by them a little bit and I didn't get too much attention from them, but it worked out well. On the brink of getting a Georgia offer, but they never ended up offering him. And his mom had this to say about it, quote, every player starts out wanting to play at the college of their state. So of course that was the dream. It was the dream for Will. It's what we expected as the hype came, as we thought, oh, he's gonna get an offer from UGA, and then when it didn't happen, we did transition well. We still love our home state, but that wasn't the plan. So we transitioned to the schools that were interested, which thankfully, one of them was Alabama. And before that, he was a big deal, but not a five-star recruit by any means. Anderson went from the number 390 player in his class to the number 17 player in the final 2020 rankings. Early on in his recruitment, his big offers were Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Purdue, and many thought he would eventually get that Georgia offer, which was the favorite to land him. But as we've been saying, that did not happen. He never got that Georgia offer despite being that highly ranked, and you could say Nick Saban once again got the best of Kirby Smart. So why didn't Kirby offer? Here's what his high school coach had to say. Quote, they were interested in him, and he went over there and visited them a couple of times. Of course, being in Georgia, a lot of these kids grew up being Georgia fans, and that becomes their dream school. But from my understanding of the recruitment, they recruited him, but he was an in-between kid. They didn't know if he would fit the outside linebacker scheme, where they would use him more in space and use him out and about. So he was kind of that in-between guy, and he wasn't big enough for one, and wasn't agile or athletic enough for the other. Well, I think they were wrong on both of those takes, as Anderson would make them pay. Alabama made him a priority, and he began the fall for the idea of wearing crimson. Alabama would first get involved in his recruitment in 2019, when their director of football recruiting invited him and his family to attend Alabama's Elite Junior Day. At that point, Anderson had already narrowed his list of schools to Auburn, LSU, Tennessee, and Georgia Tech, and was honestly skeptical the interest was even real. This would change everything, though. His mother said, quote, It was just amazing. We went in thinking we were going to go see the school and find out everything about Alabama, but we actually walked away like, oh my gosh, I could see him here. But we didn't think anything about it. And then they told us that Coach Saban wanted to talk with us. And of course, who's going to turn that one down? We went in and we talked to Coach Saban and he was just telling Will what they could offer and things of that nature. And I'm looking at Will saying that if he offers, we're going to have to run out of here. She also said she teared up and that would eventually happen. Anderson quickly felt at home in Tuscaloosa and visited Alabama five more times before signing his national letter of intent and enrolling early. He came from Dutchtown High School in Hampton, Georgia, and he did pick the tide over offers from over 40 schools. So why did he go to Alabama? He said, quote, what stood out about Alabama is the group of men that's there and in this facility. In high school, I told myself I wanted to be surrounded by people who have the same mentality as me, the same expectations, and the same standard. When you come to a place like Alabama, everyone in the locker room has the same expectations for themselves and the same mentality and competitiveness. To be at Alabama, you have to be a very good competitor and you have to be able to compete every day even when you don't feel like competing. So yeah, it's just a different type of mindset when you come to Alabama and I think that was the biggest thing for me when I was getting recruited. That's why I wanted to come here, because of the mindset and because of the men who are going to be here to help me along the way and help me to get where I want to be. So now Anderson was a five-star player and was headed to the Tide. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a five-star, number one defensive end, and the 17th best player in the class of 2020. Like most Bama recruits, you'd redshirt, maybe play a little bit, and then eventually become a star as an upperclassman. That is not how it went with Will. Immediately when he got there, their star lineman DJ Dale had this to say. He's just a guy who came in, and you could just tell that he's got it. His confidence. He's just so willing to learn. He's a great player. He's absolutely got it, and he came in with it. 
Luckily for Anderson, Bama had lost both of its starting outside linebackers from the past year. Those guys were Terrell Lewis and Anthony Jennings, and they were both headed on to the NFL. That would open up an opportunity for them to play. He ended up competing with Ben Davis and Christopher Allen, and apparently he did so well, he rose to the point where he could earn significant playing time as a true freshman. There were rumors that he had multiple sacks in the team's first scrimmage, and that he was a disruptive presence and consistent throughout fall camp. So how did Will Anderson do as a true freshman in 2020? Well, he had a pretty good year. He finished with 52 tackles, 7 sacks, and 1 forced fumble. Bama had one of the best defenses in the country, they went undefeated, and won another national title. Anderson, as a true freshman, was an All-American, named an All-SEC player, and everyone was gushing about his future. Little did they know that he would have a monster 2021 campaign. So far this year, he's finished with 91 tackles and 15 and a half sacks, but the numbers do not tell the whole story with him. As I've been doing research, many college football insiders have been saying he's the most disruptive player in the game, and that he is by far the best player in college football. Keep in mind, his teammate Bryce Young just won the Heisman, and many believed Will Anderson was a better player. He was constantly a force, and despite entire offensive game plans being schemed around him, he still managed to finish with 15 and a half sacks and just could not be stopped. No matter what you did, he was going to get to the quarterback, and he was going to disrupt the offense's game plan. Many thought he would be a Heisman finalist, but he was snubbed. This caused a lot of outrage amongst Alabama fans, and honestly, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. He actually got some first place votes, but was not brought to the ceremony. Expectations would be insane for Anderson in 2022, and many were starting to believe he could be the number one overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, but he had a pretty much impossible standard to live up to, so pretty much no matter what he did in 2022, people were to call him overrated or say he didn't live up to the hype. Anderson did as good as you could have expected. He finished the 2022 season with 51 tackles, 10 sacks, 1 interception, and 1 pass deflection. He also had a pick 6 in one of those games, and while his tackles and sacks nearly did get cut in half, there were times when teams had two offensive linemen, a running back, or a tight end on him, and they did everything imaginable to stop him. Anderson had a pretty much impossible task to live up to, and he pretty much did exactly what was expected of him, and he still has stock to go number one overall. Anderson brought home a ton of awards, including the Nagurski Trophy, the Lombardi Award, the Lott Trophy, the Chuck Bednarik Award, and he was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year once again. It's also obvious that he was both an All-SEC and All-American player. As we all expected, Anderson decided to declare for the 2023 NFL Draft, and he has a chance to go number one overall. Usually, a quarterback goes number one overall in the draft, but this year, the Bears had the number one overall pick. Unless they trade the pick away, the Bears will likely take Will Anderson Jr. They already have a quarterback in Justin Fields, and getting the best defensive player in this year's draft will definitely help their franchise. Anderson is probably by far the best prospect in this year's draft, but he may not go number one overall based on circumstances or what team ends up taking that pick. Either way, he's a lock to go in the first three picks, and at 6 foot 4 and 250 pounds, Anderson is a freak of nature, will perfectly translate to the NFL, and should dominate and terrorize the league for years to come. With how well Aiden Hutchinson did last year, I expect Anderson to come in and do the same or better, and he will more than likely go down as both an all-time college football and NFL great. So yeah, today we talked about the rise of Will Anderson, went through his story, his tied career, and my expectations for him in the future. But what do you guys think? If you're a Bama fan, what do you think of Will Anderson? If you're a fan of any other team, where do you think he'll go? And what do you think of his future? And what prospects should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about Will Levis. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.